and you are the worst. <laughs> so uh, it is really fascinating to listen. Okay, it is really fascinating to listen to the earlier discuss uh, discussions. And I think some of the views which you have shared, you will find those emerging out of this uh, research work too. But we came across a very nice article in, uh, you know, I think in Times of India, which talked about how those dams, which were actually not built, were way to build, and how the people from the area were enrolled in the program. So, taking on from uh, that article, we decided to, you know, come up with this uh, study. And what we tried to do, instead of you know going into the nitty gritties at the local level, we first tried to develop an overall picture, like what exactly is happening with the uh, energies in the country. And then we tried to look into the factors, like why employment generation is less, what is exactly happening in the water harvesting or the water uh, management structures. So this, this particular paper is all about that. And shortly we'll be commencing uh, uh, more case studies across India to further validate what we have come up initially in our overall uh, uh, study. <coughs> well, I, don't know, I don't want to go into all these details, you all know it well. Uh, but just, just one point, you know. <coughs> the, the, uh, this energy is, it started, as I was saying, it started with a budgetary allocation of about 12,000 12, crore, which subsequently increased to about 40,000 crore last year. And for this year, it was down 33,000 crore. So it is all of the premise, you know, that this is, I mean, many, and I'm not saying all, but many project area, this is the foremost program, you know, this is the one program which is creating wonders in the rural landscape, this is the one program which is able to create brilliant uh, employment, all the farmers are getting 10,000 rupees in a year, so the, 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 all these are based on the critics, so let's keep this program going, this is a wonderful idea, let's keep uh, uh, this thing going. Now, we will see what exactly has happened. So let us try to see what exactly has happened in the financial year 2011-12. <coughs> if you see uh, the number of people who actually demand an employment out of those who actually registered is only 41%. Now out of these who actually got the employment, the household who are actually able to get 100% or 100 years of employment is only 8%. If you calculate how much average person days of employment per household is generated, it comes out to be only 43. And Shilp, here is your answer. You are asking about, you know, whether it is just in budgetary allocation, you know, um, and the scheme, uh, the fund may be go up or it may come down. But if you see, I think the total uh, allocation this year was around 40,000 crore. And if you see the amount of fund which is utilized is already 37,000 crore. But we don't see such kind of a uh, progress yeah. Just just one small clarification. Hmm. So total fund allocation in the budget is a sum total of the demands or the labor budget sent by the state. Hmm. So obviously the utilization is going to be close to that. Hmm. Why is that surprising? No, but, but then you were saying that you know it may go up or it may it come can up. also go up because but the but states are also only like pretty that's fine, but you know we can we can discuss that. But let me let me first finish this. Okay. Let's let's finish uh, but what, what is uh, surprising to see is actually the number of works which are actually completed are only 17 percent and all other works you know they are in various stages of development you know some are, some are ongoing, some of the approved projects have not even taken off. So th th there is, there is uh, uh, quite a mismatch and actually the number of uh, assets which have been actually completed and the amount which is already been utilized. <coughs> well this, this slide just shows uh, what are the various works which have been undertaken. And uh, uh, again, these figures have been uh, taken from uh, uh, one presentation which has been uh, given by the Secretary of Rural Development. So where, where she showed like, what are the actual expenditure per work undertaken and what kind of benefit has been created through these structures. If you look at the progress in terms of uh, you know number of uh, uh, assets created or completed against the uh, uh, total which are approved, we see that there is a declining trend in, in uh, water conservation and harvesting work, in uh, micro irrigation work, and <coughs> again in the renovation of uh, traditional water bodies work. Even the overall completion ratio is not a great uh, picture to show. I mean, you will have a maximum of I think around 30% in case of flood control and land development. So the, even even the overall scenario in the in the in the context of completion is not uh, emerging is, is not showing as a great trend. Well, uh, as Aburuji was mentioned, we also tried to did uh, some analysis, you know, why this employment generation is, is so poor under, in, uh, in, under energies. 
So we actually came up with the, quite a similar uh, things which you come up with. What we found is in the, in the agricultural prosperous states, actually evolutionary of land for undertaking public work is limited. Like you were mentioning about Bihar, we also find the similar thing in Haryana, in Punjab. You know, where, where people are more involved in agriculture, you know, all, all of the rural landscape is into agriculture. So there is actually not, not enough, enough uh, scope of the work. <coughs> Again, activities such as farm visiting, cleaning of village trains, actually would not lead to 100 days of employment. Why are these agricultural prosperous trade on the one hand? I can understand there would be problems in finding land for such works in Punjab hmm. because the value of land is very high. But also in Bihar hmm. because of population density, it has got nothing to do with agriculture. No, but, but this is like uh, we, we did some estimation. So we came up with the figure that in, in Punjab and Iran, around 1% of the area which you know can be uh, taken up for NREGS work. In Kerala, I think it was around 2% of the area which can be taken up for NREGS work. Hmm. So in those in those estimation, it was actually agricultural more prosperous states which were emerging. So, so that is why we have uh, used this statement. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, but, but, yeah. but yeah, but in Bihar, no? It's a question of biodiversity and yeah, yeah. yeah. No? Yeah. 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 I think that's a point of question. Yeah. 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 Actually, actually, in Bihar, what we find that, you know, even the demand for the employment is more, but still, you know, uh, the work which is taken up in energy is very less. So as uh, uh, the, the statement was made earlier, so if we see that actually it is as long as the northeastern states where you have a kind of you know 30 to 40 percent of the households which are actually completing 100 days of employment, in other states including uh, you know Bihar or, uh, and, 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 and many states, I mean not only Bihar or agriculture prosperous states, but in almost all the states, the, the proportion of uh, household who are actually able to get 100 days of employment is very less. No, it is in many states it is hard to find sufficient unemployed people in the village who are willing to work for MNRHS. Now again I will take example of Bihar. So we, we have seen that around 50 th 53 lakh people from Bihar alone migrate to other states to work on the uh, to work as a farm laborers. So even even in, in these states it is actually hard to make those people stay back, get hundred rupees or maybe one twenty rupees in a as an NRHS fund. And they, they leave aside the work which they are going to get uh, when they move out of uh, their state to work in other agriculture fields where they can earn more money. I don't understand why this session is 100 days. Why everyone get 100 days? Let it want less. Say somebody. The point is. The point is when the, when the program is made, you know, you have to give 100 days of employment. Then what is the point? Then what is the point? That is the maximum. Okay. 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 Now, you are understanding the law in the wrong way. I think it's not that we have to give 100 days employment to everyone. That is the maximum anyone can demand. Okay, I understand your point, but the issue is when you give me 20, you give me 20 days of work. You give me 20 days of work. What is that? 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 What's the point if you give one day of the moment? What is the point? No, if I want only 10 days, what's wrong with it? No, 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 Actually, uh, some of this is 
ఎవరి దేశం సో <laughs> it seems you know the sole purpose of emory uh, emory is is on spending large amount of money then to ensuring uh, quality works no there are several complaints related to irregularity in implementation of uh, emory's uh, activities from different states so this basically shows you know proportion of uh, total complaints you know which each state has reported and i think uttar pradesh from uh, uttar pradesh we have the maximum complaints regarding the implementation from uh, forward by rajasthan madhya pradesh and also in bihar now government of india own report says you know spending on some of the government work has has been unwise you know uh, on sabin nagar in area it's scanty rainfall you know arid zones scanty rainfall without conceptualization of catchment area you know what is the catchment area from where these ponds are going to get water you know whether whether there are enough source of recharging then expenditures have been incurred on non existing project there were recently an article published where is where uh, in, in case of bhante or chatisgarh where they say you know there were around four stop check dam or check dams which are constructed which actually were not present at all and many of the people who are who are actually listed as a nrgs were they were actually dead so such is a kind of a scale of corruption which is emerging from various uh, sides <coughs> now now this is a well established fact now that in close basin you know water harvesting produces negative down uh, downstream impact to severe social and ecological uh, cost if if the planning you know if the planning of those structures are not appropriate if the planning of those structures does not consider what are the uncommitted flows you know whether there are uncommitted flows or not so those structures are likely to create negative impact downstream now this is uh, the work which was uh, done by uh, dr dinesh and other scholars you know looking looking at you know how the rainfall in reservoir inflows pattern changes so if you see after 1995 Uh, this is the case of Saurashtra where, where uh, uh, this recharge movement it gathered pace after 95. So what we have seen after 1995, the uh, the kind of inflows which were received in the reservoir actually it, it reduced substantially. And only I think in one of the year, which is in 2005, uh, there was uh, overflow from the reservoir. And this is because lots of hard water harvesting structures have come up in the upstream of uh, this particular reservoir. Now well, there have been reports that no, I mean we we have done uh, quite a field work for the for uh, for uh, making uh, coming up with these the statements. We have visited uh, Rajasthan, we have visited uh, Haryana, we have visited Punjab, we have visited Andhra Pradesh, we have visited Karnataka. So they what what the uh, the kind of thing which came uh, which we were able to uh, conceptualize is that uh, no geological investigation because it is something which which we are uh, you know uh, giving farmers to do. now so this is uh, no geological investigation or undertaken for initiating ground water recharge schemes <coughs> now in the reason of fund for uh, doing such in, in investigation at the local level is an issue and also the availability of scientific uh, technical manpower on such large scale in rural areas questionable in many instances lack of uh, lack of maintenance resulted in company asset falling under disuse <coughs> now uh, sarvaji was asking about you know what, what are the kind of impact on the farm uh, wage rate so in punjab between 2008 and 2010 it increased from around rupees 700 to uh, 2500 per acre in orissa again in a year there was increase about 43% in other uttar pradesh, pradesh karnataka and tamil nadu there was increase about, about 25% now this this specially hurts agriculture activity of those farmers you know who hire workers and especially those farmers who operate on a very small margin of profit you know for them to pay such a high uh, for them to pay such a high uh, uh, labor cost you know it is substantially increases their input cost and affect their net returns from agriculture <coughs> now 
the, the idea of you know discussing that is to not to ridicule the program, but the idea is to suggest you know how we can intervene, how we can make those uh, water management interve in intervention better case specific, better location specific, so that you know we can get we can get the desired benefit. We will able to uh, because we, we are making such a huge uh, investment. So we, it should be it should be coming back to the community. It should be coming back to the rural population. So that is why we thought of coming up with you know how these interventions can be made more meaningful. Now <coughs> there is no question that you know we need we need uh, to integrate hydrology and uh, economic conservation in planning these uh, water management interventions. You know, as as I said earlier, at the basic level, you know these water management schemes uh, need a careful assessment of unutilized uh, runoff available for further harnessing. Recently, there was a uh, court. Uh, I, I think it was it was not exactly a court case, but Rajasthan government raised a serious objection against Madhya Pradesh because Madhya Pradesh has come up with many water harvesting structure on Chambal River, and due to this, the flows in the uh, Gandhi Sagar Dam has reduced substantially, and there are reports that around 1,500 such structures have been built upstream uh, uh, on this Chambal River. As a result, the inflows into the uh, Gandhi Sagar Dam has reduced substantially and Rajasthan government has actually threatened Madhya Pradesh that they will be bound to take a legal action. If you don't, you know, dismantle uh, uh, all the structures or you don't conduct a proper uh, studies to see, you know, how the flows can be uh, maintained. Now, definitely we need to prioritize these interventions. So what we did, we identified three broad typologies we call to see you know, what kind of a land and water uh, interventions can be made in different regions of India. <coughs> well, this is, this is a set of a broader typology which we have come up with. You know, there, there can be uh, you know, certain areas which may not fall in that typology and certain areas which, which should be included in the typology. Those things can be worked out. I mean, we, we also need to do proper research on them. But we have considered, we have come up with certain broad criteria where we, uh, we have come up with the areas which are both naturally and physically water abundant regions, high rainfall, you know, uh, the, 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 the demand is much less in the supply. Then there are regions which are naturally water abundant but physically water scarce. Most of the hill areas, western hills and eastern Himalayan region, you know, where, where you get good rainfall but because of steep slopes there is a greater runoff. And then there is a, a third typology which are naturally and physically water stress region where rainfall is low and then the demand for water exceeds the supply level. <coughs> now based on this classification we have arrived at what kind of interventions which can be taken up. So in the areas which are both partially in uh, physically water rich, I think uh, uh, such as uh, Bihar floodplains, we need to uh, go with flood protection uh, work and uh, afforestation work to stop soil erosion and silting of existing reservoirs. In areas which are naturally water rich and physically water scarce, there, there is a case for doing uh, more water conservation and harvesting intervention. But but care has to be done to focus more on the surface uh, water intervention because you know most of the groundwater in these areas it, it gets lost as a base flow. So you need to really uh, focus more on the surface water, surface harvesting and impoundments, provision of irrigation facility to the farmers, and watershed management in hills and mountainous areas. In, in the last uh, typology, which is both naturally water scarce and physically water scarce region, what we see in these regions, they are also the region where most of the agriculture takes place. So in these areas, even the irrigation water demand is much higher. So we have to consider, we have to consider those things in mind while we are planning the water management interventions. So that is why we say that in these areas you have to go for land preparation. So that you know you, you, you can reduce the runoff from the fields, you can you can have a, you know a, a, what should I say, non-beneficial uh, uh, sorry, beneficial uh, water loss should be reduced. Non-beneficial. Non yeah, sorry. That is a percolation. I wanted to use percolation term, but then I got confused. Then in our decision, a mining needs to be there so that there are less seepage uh, from these areas. And uh, renovation of traditional water bodies. Now here care has to be taken. Now we just don't go and start breaking up. Like Abu, Abuji was saying, you know, you just get the GCB. Abuji. <laughs> you just get the, you just get the GCB and you know and start breaking up uh, holes. You know, it, it, it actually interface with the soil structure. It interface with the, uh, the topography. So you you need to mainly focus on silt sapping, American American uh, production, and waste water consumption. Yeah, last thing. <coughs> so 
so to conclude, whatever field editions we have uh, gathered, it shows that NIEGS has failed to meet the expectation on employment generation and water management front. Well, we have discussed, we have discussed uh, at the start of the session that there are certain design problems and the same thing applies here. There is a shortage of key administrative and technical staff required for proper implementation of the scheme. Ash Shilpur Singh in his typologies, you know that you have a great administrative leaders, you can get the scheme done and where you don't have the leaders, you won't be able to get the scheme done. Planning and implementation of water management works are seriously flawed due to total absence of hydrological and economic analysis. Now, we have suggested these broad water management strategies, but again, you know, a lot of scientific inputs would be required for technical planning of these, uh, these particular intervention in a given locality. And we, we seriously say, you know, when we are spending around 40,000 crore for a particular scheme, some amount should be spent on the research to actually see whether those structures, whether those assets which we want to create are actually feasible in those areas or not. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What I would suggest is we, we have to take a break for tea now, come back at 4.30, then continue if you want any pressing questions, you know, scientific questions. So you can see the source. Yeah, not those stores. The source will be, yeah. So, and then come back to the source.